So yesterday I read problem four and I couldn't help thinking about it. So um, this is not quite what I wanted to show you. But uh, well, let's get this get on with the show. So any two non-degenerate conic sections are equivalent by some linear change of variables. Well, we know that by some linear change of variables in a fine space, they may be reduced to a circle, hyperbola, and a parabola. And uh, in projective space, we consider these polynomials. Or equations. So it's only here that we have a real problem where we need to uh, diagonalize the matrix. So um, I thought, why not try to do it in general instead of uh, doing it with these examples? It's quite simple to see uh, no, whoops, that. Um, if we move this to the other side and then change the names, they are identical. And here <clears throat> it's the sum of y z and the difference of y z. So <clears throat> it's easy to see. But why not try to solve it in general? So if we have any uh, equation, Etc. Uh, that can be represented by a matrix, a symmetric matrix. And <clears throat> symmetric matrices can be diagonalized. When I started, uh, the re I knew the result, of course, I knew it could be, I knew how to do it at the, f the first st year at university, but I didn't really understand why it had to be that way. And later on, when it was generalized to in functional analysis, so that operators, uh, normal operators, that there was a norm associated with them, etc. No, no, a measure associated with them, etc. So the uh, spectral theorem. Uh, I never really understood why. What's the what's the reason that it necessarily must be diagonalizable? So I read a little on the net, and I, I found a lovely uh, argument. It's not quite general, but I love it because it gives an idea. Now, if all the eigenvalues are distinct, then there is one eigenspace for each of them. And in complex space, there will be three eigenvalues if they are distinct, three distinct. So there are three distinct eigenspaces. And then when it's symmetric, the, uh, well, you can see the point. So the question is if we have an eigenvalue with eigenvalue multiplicity two or three, oh, three is obvious, but then two, how come that uh, the, the eigenvector multiplicity equals the root multiplicity? So that's, that's the problem. And that's, that's a little tricky. So um, 
that's where I ended with this. But the point is that we will have three eigenvalues, so it can be diagonalized by a linear transformation. Yeah. Now, it's possible that one of them vanish. But in case none of them vanish, then we can reduce it to this. And now, if lambda 1, 2, and 3 all are all have the same sign, then there's only oh, then there are no solutions. So we have to have two of one sign and one of the other. And since we can move them to the other side of equation, we can assume that there are two positive and one negative. And that means that they're basically equivalent. So the problem is, what if we have a vanishing eigenvalue? Let's say lambda 3 is naught. And the other ones are distinct. Now let's just normalize it. That gives principally these two. And this one has no solutions. Oh, uh, that's wrong because um, x3 is free. So we get the line at infinity. So the solution to this is the line, the line at infinity. Now this one can be uh, factorized so that we have Oh, well, how can I write it? All these, so they form two planes. We have the parameterization of it here. So uh, in a, the affine space, it's two lines and then the line at, no, then just one point at infinity. So it's the line, yeah, it's two lines in a fine space and then 1.1.0 naught and 1 point minus 1 point naught at infinity. That's of course the projective completion of the two lines. And if we have two roots, then it's just x1 squared vanishes. And that's x1 vanishes. So that's uh, the line uh, 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 yeah, the line at infinity for that's all points 0 0.8 point point B. So if A vanishes, it's 
this point that is the center of the coordinate system otherwise it's the uh, I don't know what is what we should call it maybe it's better to to say if B vanishes I think we should do that instead if B vanishes it's this point and if B is unity then it's this affine so it's the uh, vertical it's the Y line in the affine space and then it's completion it's projective completion So that means that, that um, it's quite reducible when one of the eigenvalues vanish and otherwise we have one of the conic se sections and they can all be written in the same form. So that was my thoughts on problem four.